Okay, so I don't see the Zoom interface anymore, but that's fine. We, we can see you in a small image on the side of the screen, and then we see the... the so I, I have a dual screen. So it works on one of the screen, but okay, it's fine. Looks good to us. You will be talking about coupling of Darcy descriptions and Navier-Stokes descriptions for two-phase flows, if I gather correctly. Yes, exactly. And I will say a few words also about uh, similar technique we, we applied for reactive transport modeling. Very good. Just, just go ahead. So should I start right now? Yes. Okay, good. So good afternoon, uh, everyone. My great pleasure to to, to give this uh, seminar to, to, to Power Lab. So in a sense, so you, two weeks ago, you, you had the presentation of Sophie Roman, who is an associate professor in our group working on microfluidic experiments. So today we will discuss similar topic, but from a modeling point of view. And in particular, I will discuss a, a modeling framework I'm developing since a couple of years something we call the micro continuum. I will explain what it is. But the idea behind that just in a nutshell is that our approach is multi-scale and it can solve at the same time Darcy flow or uh, Navier-Stokes uh, Navier flow. So yeah, I forgot to mention. So I'm, a, I'm an associate scientist at the uh, Earth Sciences Institute uh, of Orléans. And uh, and yes, so here in our group, we are interested in all kinds of uh, processes related to, uh, to subsurface, including uh, carbon capture and storage, geothermal energy, uh, aquifer remediation, and so on. And of course, as you know, so our final objective here is to, to be able to understand and to model this complex physics of flow transport at a reservoir scale, very large scale. But to go there, uh, all these geological porous media, they are very processes in this uh, geological porous media, they are very challenges, challenging to, to model because, first of all, they are multi scale material. Uh, when we say multi scale, it means that there, there is a, I can be highly heterogeneous in terms of. Uh, uh, or size uh, distribution, but also we can have a fracture or damage media. Uh, not only we have single phase flow, but we can have multiple phase fluid phases that uh, move into, into the force space. We can have surface chemistry, thermal processes, and the, the, the evolution of the pore structure is not fixed in time, but it can evolve because of chemical reaction or because of swelling or, and so on. So importantly, all these processes, they, they, they are coupled with each other. So it's very challenging to, 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 model, uh, to model everything like that. And here the idea, and you, I guess you, you are familiar with these approaches, the idea is to, to use a, a multi-scale strategy where we have a cascade of scales that are nested within each other. So we start from the molecular level, and then there is different scale up to the up to the field scale. So here, what we are doing, we are interested in all the scales that can be uh, described using continuum mechanics, the, the, the law of continuum mechanics. And here we make the distinction between uh, the pore scale, where we, we apply Navier-Stokes, and the larger scale when we, we apply Darcy. So to, to, to be more so I, I give this uh, this kind of reminder just to to, to be sure about what what I'm uh, what I'm doing and in particular because later we, you will see that we we are mixing a bit of these two uh, two different representations. So at, at the pore scale, this is what you can see on the left hand side. So we have a full description of the pore space. So what you see in blue is uh, the volume that is occupied by void. In red, it's the volume that is occupied by the solid phase. And at the interface between the, the fluid and the solid, you, you, 
we do have an interface, we do have a boundary. And in terms of physics, so the, the law of uh, the fluid mechanics applies, so we have Navier-Stokes and we, we need to apply a boundary condition at the solid surface. And on the other end, we have this uh, continuum modeling uh, approach, so continuum modeling in the sense of false media where something we can call Darcy's scale because this is the scale where Darcy's law applies. So here we don't know exactly the, the geometry of the microstructure, but instead we, we have average properties and uh, effective parameters. So effective parameters such as the porosity, the permeability and the su surface area. So the, the law, the fluid flow is, is uh, governed by, by Darcy's law here. And all these parameters, so they, they, they describe the, the geometry and they can evolve. Uh, for example, if you, if you have, uh, if you have, um, if you have a chemistry, surface chemistry, such as a dissolution or precipitation. So one of the question actually for, for, for us is how, what, what is the law to, to change the permeability with the, uh, with the porosity when you when we do change this um, this uh, geometry same thing how what are the law at the very large scale you you can use to, to model a multi-phase flow so here you you will have fluids that are that reduce uh, the available uh, pore space and how do you reduce this kind of uh, this kind of permeability use in, in case of multi-phase flow so I, I put two slides to, to clarify what we, what we mean and to, to pose the, the equation. I guess many of you are familiar with that, but uh, I wanted to, 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 yeah, to focus on the, the governing equation for, for scale and the governing equation for, for Darcy scale. So here at the pore scale, we are using the Navier-Stokes equation. So this is, uh, you, you, you have the equation here. So it's a set of different equations. So you have the mass balance equation, the first one. A momentum balance equation. So this is the one we, we use to, to, to refer to as a Navier-Stokes equation, Navier-Stokes momentum. So here, importantly, if you neglect the left-hand side, you, you get the Stokes flow, so which is valid for very slow flow, which is most of the time the case for subsurface flow. And at the interface between the fluid and the solid, we, we had to impose a boundary condition. So here for single phase flow, we say it's a no slip condition. So the velocity is equal to zero, but actually it can be much more complicated when it comes to multi-phase flow. So I will not discuss that or really briefly uh, later, but just to mention this point that is very challenging for multi-phase flow. Here we do have a PhD student who is working full time on trying to, to to, to develop a better uh, boundary condition for uh, the two-phase flow. At the large scale, so at the large scale, it's, uh, we, we do have the Darcy's law. And so here I show you, I show you the Darcy equation. So you have the velocities that relate to the, to the, pressure, the pressure gradient and the coefficient of uh, proportionality between the, the two. It's uh, what we call the permeability and is intrinsic to the geometry of the porous material. So it has been proposed empirically by Darcy, but now there is formal demonstration using homogenization. So what we know, we know that actually this law is an upscale, it's a volume of rage uh, uh, version of the Stokes. So if you, you take Stokes equation, you volume of rage Stokes equation, you will get, uh, you will get Darcy's law. And there is still an uh, ongoing question about uh, the validity of Darcy's law for two and, and three more phases. So in my approach, I'm doing what I'm say, what I'm calling multi-scale modeling using the microcontinuum approach. And this, the microcontinuum approach, actually, instead of solving Stokes flow, something we, you have on the on the left, or Darcy, something you have on the right, I'm using the Darcy Brickman Stokes equation. And this is the equation you can see in this gray box here. So here you, you, you recognize, uh, you recognize a, a Stokes equation with some porosity and also an additional drag force. So the drag force is it's a, it's a, it's a Darcy term. 
And what is interesting with this, with this equation, it's, there are several point, points that are interested with, with this equation. So first of all, it doesn't come out of nowhere. It's not an empirical equation. So it's really, you take, you take the Stokes equation, you apply volume average operators, you will get this equation. Then if you assume that you, you are in the, in a volume, in the region where you do not have any solid, so there is no drag force, so the drag force vanishes and you recover the Stokes equation. On the other end, if you are in a region where you do have uh, some solid content, for example, so the gray region in, in our domain, in this case, the viscous dissipation term, so the, the term in the middle in, in, in my equation, the second term, is completely negligible in front of the drag force. And your Darcy Stokes equation turns to tends asymptotically to, uh, to Darcy, Darcy's law. So just to, to summarize, so we have one single equation that is valid everywhere in, my, in the domain, computational domain, regardless the content of, uh, of your cell. So you can have fluid, you can have solids, the equation is still valid. So when you do not have any solids, so for example, in the picture B in the middle, in the white region, it's, it describes a crack or a small fracture, so you, you do not have any, uh, any solid here, and we, we recover that, we recover with Stokes, uh, Stokes law. On the gray region, gray scale region, here we, the same equation applied, but it uh, tends to uh, Darcy's law. And at the interface, this equation, uh, this equation captures uh, the continuity of uh, viscous, uh, viscous stress. So we have this single equation that we can use for this kind of hybrid scale simulation at the, at the continuum scale if we have a full, a full Darcy approach. Yeah. But also if we assume that the solid is actually, um, it's actually a fictitious uh, uh, porous, uh, porous domain, we, we have a very low permeability. It's a fictitious porous domain. We have a very low permeability and then it turns out that the velocity drops to near zero value and we, we recover a no slip condition at the interface between the, your fluid region and, and your solid. So this is roughly basically what I'm calling the micro continuum approach. So this approach is by default to scale by construction. So we, it can be used to, to simulate uh, flow processes in domain when you have a high contrast of permeability. For example, here in a fractured media where you, you want to, to fully resolve the flow in the fracture network, but you want to, to model the, 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 the flow in the matrix using Darcy's law. You can use that for doing poor scale simulation using full Cartesian grid. So here, this is what, what I said. So it's a, what we say penalized approach. So we consider that the solid that is the, the white grain in, in, in this uh, picture are actually porous region. And then it's porous region with low permeability, low porosity value. And then you, you recover, uh, you recover no slip condition. Based on that, we can, we can use this, uh, this model to move the fluid solid interface with chemical reaction. And I will say a few words about, about that. You, you have my colleague from, uh, from Princeton University, Francisco Carrillo and Jan Boer, who extended this microcontinuum framework to, to model uh, deformable media when they have swelling or fracturing. And also some of the recent work we have done on the microcontinuum model with uh, Francisco Carrillo and, and Jan Boer is to, to, to model the multiphase flow, uh, multiphase flow effect in this uh, microcontinuum approach. So I will show you some example of uh, the micro continuum approach for um, geochemical, for solving geochemical processes, and also this work for modeling the multi-phase flow in a multi-scale framework. So let's start with my first uh, example here. So the first example is to, to model some geochemical uh, reaction. At the, at the pore scale. So here the, the question is, uh, at the Darcy scale, we, we say that the, the, the flow and transport equation are modeled with average uh, balance equations that has average properties, such as the permeability, the surface area. And when it comes to, to, to reaction, uh, 
there is a discrepancy between the, the rate of fraction you will model in the in the lab using a, a baker and and the, the the rate of reaction you 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 will uh, you 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 will mod you will measure in the in the field or using uh, using this uh, your large uh, darcy 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 kind of model and one of the reason actually is that these differences that sometimes orders of magnitude one of the reasons is that not all the, the reactive surface of your grain will react uh, at the same time. So here in red, you see the, the geometric uh, uh, surface area. And actually, if you, if you, if you, if you superimpose uh, the flow, so here is the Stokes flow in this uh, cross section of uh, sandstone, what you observe, you observe actually some preferential flow pathway and if you have the full picture, so here it's only a zoom in. If you have the full picture, you, you will see that this main flow path in, the, in this sandstone, they occupy something like, yes, yeah, 30% of the, of, the, of the volume. And which means that the, the rest of the volume are, are very slow flow, slow flow region. So in terms of transport, it means that if your transport is dominated by advection, only the, the surface that are the vicinity of this, uh, of this uh, highways will, uh, will react and the, the rest of them will, will be uh, almost uh, not accessible by the, by, the, by the reactant. Of course, if you have in a diffusive uh, transport regime, so you, you, you will contaminate all your, all your surface uh, at, at the same time. So here, what we, we do, we want to use for scale modeling to, to be able to quantify this uh, accessible uh, reactive uh, surface area. So to do that, we, we developed uh, our micro continuum model for uh, reactive, uh, reactive transport at the pore scale. So here at the pore scale, it really means that we, we do have a solid with a sharp interface with a fluid and we are moving this, uh, this interface uh, according to the, to the chemical reaction. So we implemented the model in, uh, in OpenFOAM. So OpenFOAM is a CFD uh, open source uh, platform. And the first thing we wanted to do was to validate uh, our model to, to be sure that actually what we, what we simulated was accurate and uh, corresponded to, 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 to the reality. So we, 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 we went to the lab, so with uh, Sophie Roman, and we, we did this uh, microfluidic experiment. So here you have a single uh, micro channel where we posted uh, a calcite crystal in the middle. So you can see the dimension in, in, the, in, in the picture. So it's, uh, yeah, the, the crystal was uh, half, uh, half a millimeter. And we injected uh, hydrochloric acid from the left uh, to the right. And we recorded the evolution of the, uh, of the crystal shape over, uh, over time. And this is what you can see. So you see here different snapshot of the, of the, of the experiment uh, over time. And you see, you see that actually with a solid grain dissolved and it deviates from the initial geometry. And you have this uh, asymmetry with a much faster dissolution uh, rate upstream than, uh, than downstream. So you, you have this uh, oval shape uh, of, the, of the crystal evolution. And we were able to reproduce very accurately this, um, this uh, shape evolution of the, of the calcite crystal using our microcontinuum uh, model. So here we did not have any um, calibration except for the rate of reaction. That's the only parameter we tune in our, in our model. All the rest was uh, physical parameters such as uh, yeah, viscosity, density of the fluid and so on. So that, that gave us actually a lot of confidence to, to use our tool for, for solving more complicated uh, stuff. And we, we did this uh, sensitivity analysis. So here, what you can see, it's, uh, it's, uh, we can say it's a micro model. So in red, it's a reactive grain. In blue, it's a fluid. We inject the acid from the left to the right. And we change two different parameters. So we change the uh, injection rate. That has the effect to change the peclet number. And we change the, 
the damp color number by uh, changing the, the reactivity uh, of, the, of the solid gray. And we run a lot of simulation and we observe these five different uh, dissolution regime. So five different uh, evolution of the pore scale structure based on the plaquelette and damp color number. So if you look at the, at the B, compact dissolution, so when we are damp color that is larger than one, but we, we, have, uh, we are in a transport uh, regime that is dominated by diffusion. Here we have a compact front that moves forward. You start to increase, uh, we start to increase the injection rate, but we are still in packet number that is below one. So the diffusion is still dominated. It's still the dominant uh, mechanism. So here we start to, to, to have this, uh, this instability in the middle. We have this uh, conical uh, dissolution. And then we start to increase the injection rate and now the, um, the advection takes over diffusion. And we, we, we see this, uh, this uh, instability, something we call warm holes that propagate into, into the domain. At, at the end of this presentation, I will show you a, a movie of, of uh, the warm holding in this kind of uh, structure. And then if you, if you keep increasing, you, you get this uh, ramified uh, warm hole regime. For uh, damp color numbers that are below one, and regardless injection rate, we have a uniform dissolution. So which means that the grain shrink at the same rate all of them. So using this kind of uh, using this kind of four scale simulation, we can average the result and do some upscaling. So this is what we did. So we 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 compare actually the, using this volume averaging of the four scale simulation. We compare the accessible reactive surface area with the uh, geometric surface area, and it turns out that. Uh, the this uh, this look match very well this uh, exponential uh, decay here so if for the moment this flow is completely empirical so i just tune some parameter to, to have it but it turns out that it match very well we have a very good agreement to, with that so one of the message here is that to in large scale reservoir simulator we can use this kind of flow to, to, to include the surface reduction that is due to hydrodynamic uh, processes. So here that was some simulation at the power scale. Uh, with this micro continuum approach, we can do the same at larger scale. So here, when I say larger scale, it means that we, we do have a matrix, a porous matrix. Here, it's not a fictitious porous domain, it's a real porous domain. And we start to, so we, it has a porosity, it has a permeability. We, can, we inject uh, an acid from the left uh, to the right. And what you will see the evolution of the void, so which means the voxels that contain uh, fluid only. So it's a, uh, yeah, this is a, the, the movie you can see here. And you see that some instabilities that they develop. And uh, at the beginning, there is a lot of seeds, so a lot of small instability. And then one instability takes over the neighboring instabilities and the others they stop their growth. And this one continue to grow until, uh, until uh, another one uh, uh, yeah, takes over until at the end, you have only one dominant form hole that, that percolates. So this is the kind of simulation you can get with this micro continuum approach. Everything I said so far with the micro continuum approach was for single phase flow. Actually, we spend a lot of time to, to extend this micro continuum model for two phase flow. And it was not that obvious because a two phase flow is much more complicated to solve than single phase flow. So the physics remain roughly the same. I mean, you still have Navier-Stokes in each phase. At the first phase, you still have Navier-Stokes in each phase. You still have the continuity of tangential component uh, of, the, of the velocity at the fluid fluid interface. But you have a discontinuity of the pressure that is due to the curvature of the interface. Importantly, also, you, you, you have some um, you, you, you have to specify some boundary condition at the interface between your fluid fluid interface and your solid surface. And for the rest of the presentation, we will just assume that we can model this, uh, this uh, condition using a constant contact angle. 
So this is, this is uh, what you, you see in the picture. So you have a contact angle that is larger than 90 degrees. We say that the, the fluid is weight, the surface is, the fluid is non-weighting. When the, the contact angle is below 90, the fluid is weighting. So we spend a lot of time to, to extend this microcontinuum model. Actually, it's, uh, it's the third attempt to, to, to get, uh, to, to get a, a model that is working well. And now I, I, I'm happy to say that uh, we have something that is validated and that can work both at the poor scale and at uh, Darcy scale. And I will show you some example. So our approach, it combines the Darcy Brickman Stokes uh, approach, so the equation I showed you before, with the volume of fluid technique. So the volume of fluid technique, it's a technique we use in fluid mechanics to track the immiscible fluid-fluid interface. So we, we, we did combine the, the two of them. Uh, in the first work, uh, this approach was able to, to model uh, flow, including chemical reaction, but only at the pore scale. We didn't have any uh, any model into the, the porous region. So we were only able to, to use this approach in this uh, asymptotic, uh, asymptotic uh, regime, which means at the pore scale. And now, uh, and when we did this hybrid scale modeling, so when we consider the matrix as porous, a, re a real porous, uh, porous region, uh, it was limited to saturated uh, region only. So which means that we did not have capillary effect nor gravity effect. So to, to develop our model, so we started from the fundamental conservation law uh, of fluid mechanics. We applied the volume of raging, and then we, we end up with uh, PDEs for single field variables. So here, when I'm saying single fields, it means that you have one average value that is valid everywhere in your domain, regardless of the content of your, of your grid. So it's, for example, the, the V or, or, the, or the pressure here. The equation is something like that. So here, it's a, the, the equation. So it looks like the, the one I showed you before for the Darcy Brickman uh, Stokes, but except that we have an additional equation for the evolution of the saturation. So my saturation here, it's alpha L. So we have this uh, conservation law for the transport of the, of the equation in the, in the momentum equation, so the third equation here, what you, what you see, so you recognize the Darcy term, you recognize the, yes, the pressure gradient, the, the, the gravity term, you have the, the Darcy term, the drag force, and you have an additional term, Fc, that is related to the surface tension forces. And actually, this, uh, this term, so Vr, uh, Fc, and, uh, and K, they are what we say multi-scale parameters because they have a different definition uh, whether we are in the navis in the poor scale region so which means that you don't have any solid in your in your grid in in your cell or that they, 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 we want them to we want the model to to to, to tend to uh, the classic standard two-phase Darcy's law when we do have solid in this uh, in this um, in this region so I will not show you the detail of the derivation. If you are interested, you can go through the Journal of Computational Physics paper that uh, Francisco Carillo, Yanvo, and myself published uh, this year. And just to say that all the model was implemented in open form and we released the code uh, in GitHub. So if you, if you are interested, you can go there, download the code, compile the code, and, and do some, uh, some, some simulation of your own. At the interface between the, the, the porous region and the, the clear fluid region, we, so we need to, to, to implement some boundary conditions. So because of the Darcy Brickman Stokes equation, we have the continuity of uh, viscous stresses and continuity of normal velocity. And to impose a constant contact angle, what we, what we did here, we locally modify the the surface tension. So it has the effect to, to impose the contact angle we, we, want to, we want to impose. So let's see some, uh, some, some verification, verification cases. So here it's the standard Buckley-Leverett analysis. 
So we 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 yeah we 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 have a one D one D domain. We we don't have any gravity. We inject uh, we inject a fluid. So we know that we have analytical solution uh, using the buckley levet uh, equation. We run the same case with our multi-scale approach, and we get exactly the same result. So here, what it means it means that our multi-scale microcontinuum model that is based on this extension of Darcy Brickman Stokes equation. For two-phase flow, it, it, it tends to, to the expected uh, solution. Same thing when we, we do have uh, gravity, we, we tend exactly to the solution that we were expecting. Then we, we did the more complicated verification case. So here it's a, a 2D reservoir with a heterogeneous distribution of the permeability. So this is what you can, you can see. And to verify our solver, our, our approach, multi-scale approach, we compare the simulation with a standard uh, two-phase flow, uh, two-phase flow Darcy solver using the IMPES uh, algorithm. So it was also done in open form using the solver called IMPES form. And here you have a comparison of the, of the two codes. So on the right is the standard Darcy, two-phase Darcy equation. On the left, our uh, microcontinuum approach for different uh, time steps. And you see that we have a very good agreement between the, between the, the two, two different solvers. So there is some small discrepancies uh, because actually the, the equations are not the same, but overall is there's a tends to the same behavior. So we did a lot of other uh, verification case. I will not present everything, but we did check that the uh, capillary and gravity uh, equilibrium in porous media uh, match uh, analytical solution and so on. We also verified at the pore scale that our multi-scale approach tends asymptotically to the standard um, two-phase flow solver. So here when I say two-phase flow solver is that you take any uh, any uh, CFD package using um, using uh, insible two-phase flow uh, uh, techniques such as volume of fluid here, or it can be also level set. So you you usually you remove the grain, you you breathe only the void, and you 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 solve the, the two-phase flow solver. So on the left, this is what you see with a classic two-phase flow solver at the four scale. So in open form, it's a solver called Interform. And on the right, it is the same using our penalized approach with our multi-scale microcontinuum model. So here, the grains are actually fictitious porous domains. So which means we they are porous, but with a low porosity, low permeability. And we see that we obtain a very good agreement between the, the poor scale and the, the larger scale. So we also check that we, we were able to reproduce the classic, uh, classic solution, including the, the, the rise of a capillary, the capillary rise in a, in a tube, the Bretterton law for the film deposited in a, along, along a tube due, during a drainage. And also we, we did check that we, we, we have the correct uh, contact angle uh, using our technique on, on, on a flat surface. So now what, what I show you, I show you that we, we, we have, a, we have a, a solver, a multi-scale solver that rely on a single equation that is valid everywhere in the domain. And this set of equations can be used to model pore scale, or Darcy scale uh, flow uh, flow problem. So it means also that we can use it in a hybrid uh, hybrid formulation. So when we say hybrid hybrid, it means that in some region of your domain we want it to be uh, Stokes. I mean Navier Stokes equation. So we don't have any solid. And on some is other region of the domain, uh, we we will use the, the Darcy Darcy equation. And so one of the example here for application is that you want to, to, to simulate two-phase flow in a, in, a fra in a fracture porous media, where you resolve explicitly what's going on in the, in the fracture. So this is what you have here for imbibition. So we inject from the left to the right. We, we do have the imbibition and then by capillary effect, we enter into, into the matrix. And we have the same for, uh, for drainage. So another case of another application of this simulation domain. 
so here it's uh, what you what you what you what you can see what you can see if we if you if you have a coastal uh, coastal barrier so it's a, it's a cross section so you 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 have uh, you have the the, the soil that is actually a, a sand sand so it's a porous uh, porous media we have the the, the barrier that is a, a sand dune which is a yeah a porous uh, porous uh, porous barrier so you can you can assume like a small gravel or big, big sand uh, big uh, sand grain here and there will be a, a wave that propagate to the to the to the barrier and that would splash on the on the on the on the barrier. So, yeah, this, this is roughly what you what you will see. And what you will see actually is that in our model, oh, in our model here, yes, this is what you see. In our model, we model we describe the physics uh, within the porous media using capillary and relative permeability uh, law. And so here in this kind of simulation, you see that the, the water in, invades uh, the, the barrier by, uh, by gravity and capillary effect, and we are able to, to model that. So here it's something that was not done before uh, in the CFD community. So I started this uh, presentation by showing you uh, reactive transport modeling. Then I, I, I move on by showing you what, what we did on the two-phase flow with this micro continuum approach. And actually, we, we, we were able to combine both of them, so which means that we, we use this micro continuum approach to, to model cases where you, we have dissolution of a solid grain and also in, under a two-phase flow, uh, two flow, uh, two flow condition. So one of the cases we, we simulated here is that we, we have a dissolution at uh, high pressure, let's say, yeah, atmospheric pressure in this kind of this experiment. So it's a calcite, uh, calcite crystal. We inject hydrochloric acid, and at the solid surface, we, we will have a generation of uh, CO2 gas, and this gas will uh, nucleate, grow, coalesce with the, with the other, and eventually uh, will detach and move out of the domain. So on the left, it's the micropudic experiment we did. For verification, and on the on the right, what you see actually it's some snapshot of the of the simulation, and here we get very accurate. Uh, I mean, accurate. We, we 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 have an overall good agreement between the between the experiment and the and the simulation. So we we ob observe exactly the same sequence of events, which is a nucleation, coalescence, growth, and uh, and detachment. So we use that with. Uh, with confidence to investigate the, the effect of uh, dissolution when we we have warm modeling. So here, the short movie you just see is correspond to the warm modeling regime we discussed before for single phase flow. And what you will see is actually the same simulation using the same parameter, except that this time uh, the CO is the CO2 that is generated during the, the the dissolution of the, of your calcite uh, goes directly into a gas phase, and this is what this is what you see here. So you see that there is a lot of small bubble of CO2 that pop up and growth, and they, they, they coalesce with each other. They, they they merge with the the bubble from the other um, other pore. And then at some point they, they also uh, they also flush out out of the domain. So interestingly, the amount of gas in the domain uh, was almost constant. So we reached a plateau around uh, 30 percent of gas, and something that was observed experimentally uh, in a paper. I don't have the reference here. But also, what is very important, you see that we have very different uh, dissolution regimes. So. On the, under the single phase flow regime, we, we have the warm holding, but here in this case, we don't have any warm hole because the gas phase is uh, it's acting as a, as a shield around the grain and it uh, limits the, the propagation of the acid into, into the domain. And here we don't have any, um, any warm hole in, in this case. So what does it mean? It means actually that uh, if we want to consider 
reactive transport for, for the solution, for example, for wormholes, for wormholing in, um, and use this uh, this uh, packet damp color diagram that identifies the different uh, different dissolution regime. What it means? It means that when you have two phase flow, we probably need another dimension that can be, for example, the solubility of the of the gas into into your um, into water. So to conclude this uh, this presentation, so we did this multi scale analysis starting from power scale. So we are building our simulation tool. So here we developed a micro continuum framework that is based on the Darcy Brickman Stokes equation. This model, it has a subgrid, a subgrid models to model what is below the size of, uh, of below the grid size. So it's well suited to for image based simulation. So I haven't shown any example here, but I, I can show you if you're interested. It's very well suited for simulating problems with moving boundaries at the port scale. So we were able to, to, mod, to reproduce the experiment of uh, dissolving calcite crystal both under single phase and two phase flow condition. We identify this different uh, dissolution regime. And what we, we see here is that the second free phase impacts strongly the dissolution dynamics. And it limits actually the emergence of the wormhole. We did extend this microcontinuum model for two-phase flow. So we have a unique set of PD for solving the flow at the port scale, at the continuum scale, and also at the hybrid scale. So we implemented this model in open form. So you can go in the GitHub link if you are interested to, to, to use it. And uh, yeah, we, we verified, uh, we did the intensive uh, verification of uh, our model. So we verified that our model tends asymptotically to the standard Darcy's law and it tends asymptotically to the, to the classic uh, port scale uh, Navier-Stokes uh, solution. And the model, the important interesting point is that this model can, can simulate uh, hybrid scale applications. So for example, in case of fracture porous media or in case of wave propagation in the coastal barrier. So we are keep working on this, uh, this framework. So it's a continuous um, effort. And now what we, what we are doing, actually, we are coupling this, uh, this micro continuum framework with a geochemical package to, to have more comprehensive uh, geochemical reactions. So for example, we use uh, FreeC at the moment. And also there is still work to do to improve the boundary condition uh, uh, at, the, at the interface between the, the fracture and the, and the matrix. And on that, I put some acknowledgement uh, for our sponsor, and I thank you for your attention. Okay, th th thank you very much, uh, uh, Cyprien, for, for a very interesting talk and, and a very impressive uh, model. I think you, you cover a lot of complexity with this. So I'm sure there are some questions. Um, so uh, I have a number myself, but I, I, is there some questions from anybody else? Okay, then, then I'll certainly start with mine. One, one thing I, I didn't uh, uh, catch, and you, you might have said it, is how do, you, how do you estimate your permeability in the regions where you do have the solid? That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, I'm still sharing the screen. So let's, let's go back to... Um, I, will, I will show you another... Um, no, uh, yeah, let's go back to... Um, yeah, for example, here. So in the gray region here, you, you have to... You, 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 the permeability in the gray region is an input. Sorry, I don't so if you want to model a two scale, your, yeah, your maybe, yeah, for example, on this one. So if you want to model a two scale, a two scale uh, setup, I think you, you might have to share your screen again because now we see you and not the presentation. Okay, you don't see. Okay, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it, it turns out that so oh, you're yeah. not seeing my screen. Uh, new share. Okay. A new share.
Yeah, so for example, here, you, you, you want to use this micro continuum model in, um, to, 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 to simulate to scale, uh, to, scale uh, yeah, to scale flow and transport processes. And here the idea is that you, you, you will resolve one scale and you will model the other scale using Darcy's law. So in this case, uh, in the matrix, in the matrix, so here, for example, here we will have, uh, we will have a permeability and we, we have to input the, the value of the permeability. And, but in the, in, this, in the channel here, we don't have any permeability. So here we will resolve explicitly the, the flow. Right. And if you, if you want to use this micro continuum at the pore scale, so what you see on the, on the left here, here it's a standard, uh, for scale simulation, so what you what we what we used to do, so you you have your the geometry of your domain, and what you what we do usually, so we 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 remove the the, the, the volume that is occupied by uh, by the solid, and we we have a boundary condition, and we only grid the, the void space. We have boundary condition. So what we do with the micro continuum model here actually it's not the same. So we use a fully Cartesian grid, and we we use um, the porosity to, to map the distribution of the solid into the domain. So when the porosity is one, we, we, are in, we are in the void. When the porosity is above one, so for example here, we, we have the solid. And in this solid, we will assume that actually it's a, it's a porous medium with low per porosity, low permeability. So here, we input a value for the porosity, but we, we, we implement a very low value in order to, to drop the velocity to a near zero value. Right. So, so you're taking this as an empirical input, is that correct? That you're, you're... So here, what I'm saying, what I'm saying in this two scale model, uh, when you want to model something with a Darcy, I mean, it's still the same as uh, the classic uh, approach of Darcy. So you still, you still need Darcy, but when you want to resolve explicitly, uh, explicitly, yeah, 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 let's see, for example, I think you, you can, we can see that. No. Hmm. Uh, I don't have the, the, the picture I wanted to, to share, but uh, what, what I'm saying is that when you, when you resolve explicitly your geometry, your porosity, you will solve, you will solve the, the standard equation of fluid mechanics. So Navier-Stokes and advection diffusion, you, 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 you don't have any solid, so you don't have any, uh, all these concepts of permeability, relative permeability, capillary pressure. But whenever you have a, a porous region and you want to model the porous region, here you will have all the, all the tools that we, we use, all these concepts that we use in the, in the, in the reservoir simulator, for example. The, the main advantage here in what I'm, what I'm showing is that we have a single framework that can solve the pore scale and the Darcy scale within exactly the same, the same solver, which we, by solving the same equation. Yes. So if I understood correctly, you're, you're, you're actually representing fluid inertia in your, your, all your open domains, but yep. uh, not, in, not in your porous domains. I, I suppose you could, you might not need to, but you could uh, also include inertia there by some kind of Forkheimer term or modification to your, your permeability. Is, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So here, yeah, it's exactly, so it's what I'm calling this uh, multi-scale parameters. And actually, if you have inertia in the pores, so if you have inertia in the, in the clear fluid region, so when you, where you don't have any solids, for example, in, in a fracture, here your inertia will come from the left-hand side of this equation. But if you want to include inertia in your, um, in the porous domain, you will have to, to, to modify this Darcy's law. So which means instead of having a, a constant value for the permeability, you will have a correction due to the Forsheimer correction. So that depends on the Reynolds number. Exactly, yes. 
Okay, very good. Further and we, we can say also the same. So let's say you, you want to use this framework for modeling shell gas. In shell gas, in the matrix, you will have a Klinkenberg effect. So you can use exactly the same framework, but here in the matrix, you will add this uh, Klinkenberg effect uh, in the drug force. Yes. Exactly. So okay. FC, FC here is like a buoyancy term or? Yeah, so here you, we do have the gravity. We do have the gravity. Uh, so we do, we do include a gravity effect. So for the moment, we, we never try to, to model this um, convection, uh, convective, uh, convective cell with our model, but uh, this is something we, we may try and I have no do doubt actually that we'll be able to, 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 to capture this kind of uh, processes. Also, I was wondering if you could, I mean, you, you could clearly add all kinds of uh, additional effects. So one of them I was thinking was, was do, do you include uh, ever the um, diffusion across fluid interfaces as opposed, for instance, with CO2 movement, that, that would be a, a relevant phenomenon. Yes, so here, are you talking on the, the, the diffusion of uh, CO2 from uh, one phase to one another? It, it, yes, it could be that, or it could be, it could be salt diffusing out of a water droplet into a surrounding oil, for instance. Yeah. So we, we, we did, um, so it's not part of this presentation, but we did spend actually a lot of, a lot of work to model at the power scale to model the, the mass transfer across uh, across the interface, where we we do have um, thermodynamic equilibrium at the at the fluid fluid interface. So, and your thermodynamic equilibrium at the interface is modeled by uh, by a partitioning uh, law. So, we 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 implemented a technique we call um, continuous species transfer, so CST, that can follow the, because I can track the um, multi-component mass transfer in a two-phase flow system when you, you have this immiscible interface. And uh, recently we extended this framework to, to be able to, to model the, uh, a local volume change due to this mass transfer by diffusion at the interface, at the fluid fluid interface. So if you are interested, you can check some of the paper on the CST, which is a continuous species transfer. It's uh, some work I've been doing with uh, Julien Mass from uh, Ariot Watt University. Right. OK. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? We can hear you. <laughs> OK. I, I was just wondering if you can you uh, uh, from your simulation, can you simulate the crossover between uh, capillary fingering and viscous fingering, for instance? And uh, another question is, uh, you know, do you see the correct scaling behavior of the density so, within these regimes? Yes. Yeah, so that, that's a good that's a that's a good point. So the so I I, I will ask another question to you. So at what scale are you what scale are you talking? Uh, well, I'm talking about the crossover between these scales because uh, this is about the scaling that on small scales, you, that in two-phase flow, it will be dominated by capillary fingering. But when you go on larger scale, you start to feel the viscous forces and you get a crossover to viscous fingers. Yeah. So For instance, you see that clearly in experiments that you see this, but can you simulate this with this, uh, this uh, simulations that you have? So. Here, what we what we show actually that our model. This is our one phase flow, isn't it? Or here, it's a it's a coarse yeah, it's a coarse scale, it's a reservoir scale, for example. But you so could also here, do two phase flow. Yeah, uh, what versions. what we show here, we show that our model, our set of equation, it tend, mathematically it tends asymptotically to the Darcy uh, Darcy equation. So, which means that if you are able to model this kind of instability with your Darcy solver, you should be able to model that with our, uh, our hybrid scale solver because asymptotically uh, we will solve the, we will tend to the same solution. 
So this is what you can see here for viscous, uh, viscous fingering at larger scale. But also, I mean, we, we also show that, uh, and we define our multiscale parameter in a way that uh, the model tends asymptotically to the, to the poor scale uh, model in, 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 in this kind of uh, setup. And here, if you are able to, to model this, uh, this uh, warm molding, not warm molding, uh, viscous instabilities in, um, at the poor scale with your poor scale solver, you will be able to, to, to model that with our, uh, with our, uh, with our approach. So th th there is no magic actually in, in, in our solver. So it's not like, a, uh, it's not like, a, I mean, it's a new set of equations, but it's actually, we, 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 we capture the same kind of behavior you, you will model uh, using Darcy's law because in a sense, behind what we call the multi-scale parameters, we do have relative permeability, capillary pressure. Okay, I think I think it's time to end because the other people have other meetings at, at, at two o'clock. So let's let's thank the speaker again. And if, if you unmute, we can, we can all clap. Thank you. Okay, th thank you very much, uh, Saint for for a good talk. You're welcome. <laughs>